Hey everyone, I just wanted to put a short disclaimer at the start of this video. You know, this is a very simple reaction. All that's really involved is just adding terbium metal to nitric acid. And originally I didn't plan on posting this as its own video. Uh, but I thought there might be some interest in seeing the whole process from start to finish. You know, that's where a lot of the enjoyment comes from for me. It, it's the process of discovery uh, during a reaction where you see what works and what doesn't work and things crop up that you didn't think would happen. You know, that's just as satisfying to me as actually having a final product. So, anyways, hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, I recently received some terbium metal uh, to add to my element collection, and I thought I'd do a couple of experiments with it beyond just sticking it in a bottle and putting it on a shelf, even though that's pretty satisfying to me. But <laughs> um, You can see that terbium metal is a uh, relatively shiny, somewhat tarnished metal, uh, as all the rare earth elements are, um, because just about all the rare earth elements are uh, reactive towards uh, moisture in the air. So some of them you have to store underneath mineral oil, uh, otherwise they'll oxidize away. Terbium is a little bit less reactive, so it'll just it'll tarnish slightly. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be trying to make terbium nitrate. So we're going to start with 0.7 grams of the metal. And what we're going to do is react this with nitric acid. Now, nitric acid can react in two different ways with metals. It can either react as a standard acid and simply produce hydrogen and the metal nitrate um, or, as we saw in my video where I made the nitric acid, uh, it can react with metals like copper to form nitrogen dioxide. Uh, so the potential reactions for terbium are uh, 2 moles of terbium plus 6 moles of nitric acid will yield 2 moles of terbium nitrate and 3 moles of hydrogen gas. The other potential reaction is 1 mole of terbium reacts with 6 of nitric acid to yield 1 mole of terbium nitrate uh, 3 moles of nitrogen dioxide and 3 moles of water. Um, so these require different amounts of nitric acid to dissolve all of the terbium. So to know how much nitric acid I need, I need to determine which of these two reactions is actually going to happen. Um, so to do that, we're just going to add one small piece to nitric and see what it does. So I've taken one of the smaller pieces of the terbium and placed it in a test tube. And now we're going to add couple of drops of nitric and see how it reacts. Whoa! That is certainly producing nitrogen dioxide. <laughs> a little bit more vigorous than I thought it was going to be. Well that's good though. So that means um, that's going to determine the stoichiometry that we're going to use. So that means the second reaction is the one that's in play here. So if the first reaction were the case and it made only hydrogen, I would only require 0.8 milliliters of the acid to react fully with the 0.7 milliliters of the terbium. Since it makes nitrogen dioxide, that means we're going to have to use uh, 1.63 milliliters of nitric to react with the 0.7 of the terbium. Um, so I'll have to add a little bit more nitric to this to get everything to dissolve fully. And apparently I'm going to have to add it pretty slowly. <laughs> so since that produced a bit of a hellish reaction uh, with all kinds of nitrogen dioxide and a ton of heat, uh, what I did for the rest of my acid was I diluted it by half. So I need a total of 1.6 uh, milliliters of my 16 molar acid uh, to react away the rest of my terbium. Um, and so I diluted that to about 2.5 milliliters. So I add the extra acid to this. Um, I'll add the rest of the pieces of the terbium. You can see again we get quite a reaction. And I think I'll be adding these in <laughs> fairly slowly. You can see at the top of the test tube, the nitrogen dioxide is starting to come out the top. which is of course why I did this outside. See, you can see how much it's bubbling there right now. Oh wow, then the test tube is incredibly hot. <laughs> I might add some more water to slow this down further.
So let's add another one. So after letting it sit for a day or so for things to settle, here's what I have. So this is my solution of terbium nitrate. Uh, when I first made it, it was uh, very turbid. It was a lot darker than this. This is much, much clearer. And you can see the reason for that is on the bottom there. So apparently there was some uh, insolubles that uh, just didn't react with the acid and settled down to the bottom. Um, so hopefully that'll be a lot of my impurities. So now we're going to transfer this to a larger container. Uh, and I'll heat it to get the crystals out of it. So now I'm going to filter this off into another container so I can get rid of all this uh, extra gunk that's at the bottom here. We'll rinse out the test tube with some distilled water to ensure that I got all the terbium out of there. Now that the solution is filtered, I'm just going to heat it gently on my hot plate uh, to drive off the water and destroy any excess nitric acid. Well, most of the water has evaporated away, so I'm going to take it and let it cool down on its own, see if we get any crystals out of it. So after letting most of the water evaporate, it uh, turns out I ended up with a really thick liquid. almost looks like an oil. So I guess that means that this stuff is not going to crystallize easily. So what I'm going to try is putting it into a uh, desiccator bag, and all that is is a Ziploc bag with a cup full of potassium hydroxide flakes in it. And the potassium hydroxide is a, is a desiccator, so it'll serve to uh, absorb the moisture um, out of the bag. So, you know, I'll put the thing to dry out in with the potassium hydroxide and seal up the bag. And what will happen is the um, potassium hydroxide will dehydrate the inside of the bag and hopefully suck out the rest of the water from uh, my terbium nitrate here. So I left everything in the desiccator bag for about a day and a half, and it's already working pretty well. Uh, you can see that the liquid that I had has now pretty well crystallized and here actually I'll take it out of the bag. I actually already took it out of the bag um, to break the crystals up a bit. So here they are, um, nice and crystallized terbium nitrate. Um, and I broke them up like this so there's more surface area for it to dry further. So I'm going to leave it in the bag actually for uh, probably another couple of days just so they can dry out you know, as well as possible. So the interesting property about terbium-3 salts uh, and the reason why I made this compound is that they're very brightly fluorescent. So I'm going to take a black light, turn that on, and uh, shine it on these crystals. And you can see they immediately glow. They're really bright green, beautiful green fluorescence. So, pretty nifty. Thanks a lot for watching.